not cause her lights to shine, and I will punish the world for their evil and the iniquity, uh, the wickedness of their iniquity, and I will cause uh, the, uh, our, uh, I don't know how to spell uh, Eric. I can't say it. See? Uh, of the proud deceased, and will lay low the haughtiness of, of the terrible. Terrible. See there, just exactly, Isaiah saw the same thing that Jesus spoke of, that the seventh seal reveals when he's cleansing the land with tribulation. Amen. That's the tribulation period, this sixth seal. Amen. Yes, he was a prophet, and the word of God was made known to him. That's 2,700 years ago. Truly, I just want to say this. The whole world, as Isaiah here, as a woman travailing, all creation is travailing. Amen. What's all this groaning and travailing about? Like a, a, a woman that's to be mother. The earth itself, nature. Why this city here, let's take our own city. When dear joints and prostitution and filth and scum like any other city. Well, I believe God would be better off looking at the way he had it a thousand years ago. When the old Ohio traveled down, they had no backwaters and floods. They had no sin in the valley. The buffalo roamed through the air, and the old Cherokee hunted and made a decent living. There was no trouble at all. But man come in. That's where sin comes in. When man begin to multiply upon the face of the earth, then sin and violence set in. That's right. Always man. Well, I think it's a disgrace. I was standing the other day in my home country there now in Arizona. Now, all I read when I was a kid about Geronimo and, and uh, Cochise and those old Apaches, because I preached to them up there. Fine people. And some of the finest people you want to meet are those Apache Indians. And then I went over there to, to a tombstone where they have all the old relics and things from the war. And I looked at, they always, you know, they always class Geronimo as, as a renegade. To me, he was a red-blooded American. Absolutely. He was only fighting for his rights like anyone would do. He wanted out that pollution in his land. And look what it is now. Turning his children, his daughters into prostitutes and everything else. And white man coming there, a white man's a rascal. The Indian was a conservative. He was a, he was a, a conservationist. He'd go out and kill a buffalo. The whole tribe, eat everything was left of it. They used a hide for clothes and tents and everything else. And a white man comes to shoot it for a target. Why, it's such a disgrace. I read an article in a paper or in Africa. That great... Place full of wild game. They got these guys, Arthur Godfrey and them, going there shooting these elephants, things out of helicopters and things like that. A picture of an old female elephant trying to die and the tears like pulling down her face and two big males trying to hold her up to keep. Why, well, it's a sin! Amen. That's a sport! No. I stand out on a field like that and we're hunting things like that and see where them. White hunters come out there and shoot them deer and cut a hind quarters off of it and sometimes kill eight or ten little does and leave them laying there and the fawns running around trying to find their mammy. And you mean that sportsmanship? That's proof you're a murder in my book. I hope Canada never gets any roads in as long as I live and keep them renegade Americans out of there. That's right. They're the poorest sports I've ever seen in my life. Not all of them. There's some real genuine man, but Nice one out of a thousand you find. Shoot anything they can see any way they want to. That's right. That's a murder. Right. He's heartless. He shoot out a season while up there in Alaska. There was up there with one of them guys who said, I picked up, I'd go out there now and find whole herds of them great big elk, or not elk, but the moose, laying there with 50 caliber machine gun bullets through their horns. Where are these American pilots out there in Alaska machine gunning out of that plane? I heard a moose. That's pure murder. They know that nothing to kill the buffalo. They could get the Indian star to death. That's the reason Cochise had to surrender. His, all of his 
princes and all the rest of them, his children, all of his people were starving to death. They went out there with big, great big loads of them, uh, buffalo building them planes when they shot off all them buffaloes 40, 50 in the afternoon. They know when they rented that, they got rid of the Indian. Oh, my, stain on the flag, the way they treat them Indians. There you are. But remember, the Bible said the hours come that God will destroy them that destroys the earth. Yeah. And the whole world. Look at them valleys. I stand up there today looking down on the valley at Phoenix. Went up on the South Mountain. Wife and I stand up there and looked out at Phoenix. And uh, I said, isn't that awful? She said, awful? What do you mean? I said, the sin, how much adultery and drinking and cursing in the Lord's name used in vain in that valley there was about a uh, hundred and and 40, 50,000 people, maybe 200,000 people in that valley. I said, 500 years ago or 1,000, there wasn't nothing but cactus, mesquite, and the old coyotes running up and down the sand river there, of the, of the washes. And I said, that's the way God made it. But man come in. What did he do? He saturated the ground with filth. The streets are full of gong. The sewers are, and the rivers are polluted with with filth. They couldn't. Uh, you know why? You better not drink a drink of some of that water. You'd get anything. Look at it. Not only here, but the world over. The thing is polluted. And the world of nature. God have mercy. The whole world in its birth pains. The world is trying. She's travailing, Isaiah said. What's the matter? She's in trying to bring forth. A new world for the millennium for all of us. Trying to birth a new world for a new people that won't sin and pollute her. Right. She's in travail. That's the reason the, uh, the we're in travail. Christ, to bring forth the bride. Everything is travailing and groaning. See, there's something fixed to happen. This sixth plague lets her go. Rather, the earthquake burst open, the star-shaped volcanics will come forth, and the earth will renew itself. New lava will break forth from the center of the earth, and she'll crumble all around and around and around when she spins out in there. And I tell you, one morning, when Jesus and his bride comes back to the earth, there will be a paradise of God there. That, oh, wow! Them old warriors of the battle walk down through there with their friends and loved ones. The anthems will fill the air of an angelic host. Oh, it was well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord that's been prepared for you like you should have had back there before E started the ball rolling in sin. Amen. Yes. Six seals going to do something. Yes, sir. Truly, the whole world is groaning and painting for the millennium age. Now, the one now is so soaked up with filth that I preached here not long ago. I'll be preached at the tabernacle. The world falling apart. That's exactly. Look what's falling apart in the world. So, everything's falling up. Certainly, it is. It's, it, it, it's got to fall apart. Listen. Look, it's framed. Let me show you the reason the world's got to do it. The frame of this world, the iron and the brass and the materials of this earth has been pulled out of its framework for war and industrial until it's just about ready. Well, we never had an earthquake the other day over in this part of the country, just the other day here, you see, St. Louis and down through there. She's getting so thin, they've pulled everything out of it. See? Its politics are so polluted, there's hardly an honest among them. It's system. It's morals is so low, it just don't have any. That's all. Okay? Sure. It's religion is cankered. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's time for the sixth seal pretty soon to be opening up. And once she does, oh my, it ends. The bride has done gone forth. She's done, the queen's done, went to take her place. She's been married now to the king while this is going on. And Israel's remnant is sealed and ready to go. And then nature lets go. Oh, what a time. Notice the last verse. 
of the sixth seal opened. Those who had laughed at the preaching of the Word. Now, the vindicated Word of the living God. Well, them prophets had stood there and performed miracles, closed the sun and everything else, and all down through the age. They, they cried for the rocks and the mountains to hide. See? To hide them from the Word that they laughed at, because they seen not come. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. He is the Word. See? They laughed at the Word, and here the Word was incarnate. <laughs> And they made fun of him, laughed at him, made fun of him. And the incarnate word had dropped forth. Why did they repent? They couldn't. Amen. It's too far then. So they know that the punishment, they hear it. They set meetings like this and know about it. And they know that the things that those prophets had predicted was looking right in the face. Amen. The thing that they had rejected, they had spurned mercy for the last time. And when you spurn mercy, there's nothing left but judgment. When you spurn mercy, just think of it. And there they were. They had no place to go. No retreat. And the Bible said here, they called for the cry to the rocks and the mountains to fall on us and hide us from, from the face of the, uh, and the wrath of the land. They tried to repent. But the Lamb had come to claim His own. See? And they cried to the rocks and the mountain, prayed, but the prayers were too late. My brother, sister, the goodness and mercies of God extended to the people. While Israel was blinded for this, for here just about 2,000 years to give us a chance to repent. Have you turned that mercy down? Oh my have God. you have you rejected that? Who are you anyhow? Where did you come from and where are you going? You could not ask the doctor. You could not ask anybody in the world. And there's no book you could read that could tell you who you are, where you come from, and what you're going with this book. Amen. Now, you know, without you have the blood of the Lamb to act in your place, you see where you're headed for. So if, if God did that for you, the least thing we could do would be accept what He's done. That's all He asked us to do. And on the basis of this, if I go any farther, I'll have to come out into that play oh, that tomorrow night service. And I, I can't, do, can't go any farther. I got it marked down here, cross stop here. <laughs> so then uh, I got to wait till tomorrow. Now, let us bow our heads just a moment. If you haven't, my precious friend, haven't accepted the love of this God that I'm talking about. If you have, listen to this folks now, if you haven't accepted His love and mercy, you'll have to stand His judgment and wrath. Now you tonight are in the same place that Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden. You have a right. You're a free moral agent. You can go to the tree of life or you can take the plan of the judgment. But today while you're sensible in your right mind and you're healthy enough to, to rise and accept it, why don't you do that if you haven't done it? Is there them people in here that hasn't as yet did that? If that be so, would you just raise up your hand and say, pray for me, Brother Branham? I now want to do it. I don't want this to come. Now remember, friends, God bless you. That's good. I have. These are not my ideas of this. I, I, this is not what I've been thinking. This is all together for me. So help me. The Holy Spirit knows it. And you wait at the Lord willing tomorrow night. I want to show you a mystery that's been going all the time right here in this meeting. I doubt very much whether you've ever seen it or not. Watch, watch tough play. It's been something that's laid right here before you. And I've watched each night this part the ride for somebody to say, I'll see it. See? Don't turn it away, please. I ask you, if you're not a Christian, if you're not under the blood, if you're not born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've never made a public confession of, of Jesus Christ by being baptized in His name to witness His death, burial, and resurrection that you have accepted, the water is ready. They're waiting. Robes are furnished in here. And everything is ready. 
Christ stands ready with outstretched arm to receive it. In one hour from now, that mercy might not be extended to you. You might turn it away for the last time. It will never touch your heart again. While you can. While you can, why don't you do it? Now, while I know the regular customary way is bring people up to the altar. We do that. That's perfectly all right. At this time, we're such crowded in here. Right around the altar, too, I couldn't do that. But I'd like to say this. In the apostolic day, they say as many as believe were baptized. Just if you can really, down in your heart, here's all it is. It is, it is an emotion, though emotion accompanies it. Just like what I said, smoking and drinking isn't sin. It's the attribute of sin. It shows you don't believe. See? But when you truly believe in your heart and you know that on the basis of what you're saying, you accept it with all your heart, something's going to happen right there. It's going to happen. Then you can stand as a witness to it that something happened. Then walk to the water. And say, I want to show to the congregation. I want to prove. I want to make my testimony stand that I'll take my place with the bride. I stand here now to be baptized. I know that there's many